a fairly even fight so far. Coletto is short with the left hand as they go in close. He's right with a right uppercut on the jaw by champion Joe Lewis as the referee, Arthur Donovan, gets them apart. Coletto puts the left hand to the jaw, and Lewis is down. The surprisingly savage and furious heavyweight championship fight in June 1939 is the theme of our show on the way it was. I'm Kurt Gowdy, and welcome to our series of American Sports Classics. Heavyweight Championship Boxing. Of all the sporting events we presented in our anthology of classics here on The Way It Was, a world's heavyweight title fight always ranks extremely high. And this is no exception. We're proud to relive the World Heavyweight Championship match between tough Tony Galento and the heavyweight champ of the world, Joe Lewis. And here to help us recreate that unforgettable ring classic from Orange, New Jersey, affectionately known as Two-Ton Tony, 29 years old, weighing 233 and three-quarter pounds, the challenger, Tony Galento. The champion of the world in his seventh title defense from Detroit, Michigan, 25 years old, weighing 203 quarter pounds, Joe Lewis. And we're pleased to have with us the Hall of Fame boxing sportscaster who's called more blow-by-blow -blow fights than anyone in history, Don Dunphy. Welcome, Don. Now, Don, tell us the scene of boxing, the era, the way it was as Galeno and Lewis were ready to match up. Well, Lewis, Kurt, had won the title about two years earlier by knocking out Jimmy Braddock in Chicago. He had uh, defended it successfully six times, the last three times, by one-round knockouts among them Max Schmeling. The challenger, Tony Galento, came in highly regarded, and despite the fact that uh, the writers sometimes disparaged his skills, called him uh, the bare barrel that walked like a man because of his 233 pounds and two-ton Tony and all that, nevertheless, he was the outstanding contender for the heavyweight title in 1939. He had won eight bouts in a row, all of them by knockout. Nobody gave him a chance, really. And you know how they have a poll of the boxing writers and sure. broadcasters? You and I have been quizzed that, in many events That's ourselves. right. Well, in this poll, nobody picked Galento to win. A lot of them picked uh, Lewis in the first, the second, the third, maybe even by a decision. But nobody picked Galento to win. And I recall a macabre bit because Quentin Reynolds, uh, a great columnist of the day and also a broadcaster, when asked, he actually predicted that Lewis would kill Galento. And I mean dead. The late Quentin Reynolds. That's right. Now, he was wrong because Glenn was still alive and with us here in the way it was. So let's go back now to June 1939. It's Yankee Stadium, and it's an amazing heavyweight championship fight. And to tell you about it, a blow-by-blow, blow, Don Dumpy. The Yankee Stadium, June 28th, 1939, an unforgettable moment in U.S. sports history, the heavyweight championship of the world as Joe Lewis and Tony Galento coming now enter the stadium to get dressed for their memorable battle. A final checkup in the dressing room just before the fight, Dr. William Walker of the New York State Athletic Commission, Joe Lewis on the left, and Tony Galento in a final friendly pose before the fight. Joe Lewis in his corner, waiting for the gloves to be put on by his trainer, Jack Blackburn. And Tony Galento already has his on, as Whitey Bemstein tightens them. It's round one for the heavyweight championship of the world. Galento, 233 and three quarters. Lewis, 200 and three quarters. The referee, Arthur Donovan. Galento immediately goes to work and crowds the champion to the rope. No punches landed there for a moment. Galento fighting out of a half crouch. Lewis has had trouble sometimes with crouching fighters. Galento again forces the champion into the ropes, and no blows have been struck here in round one as yet. Lewis, short with that left hand, pecks out with it. It's a deadly jab when it lands. It's short again, and Galetto in, hurts Lewis with a left hook to the jaw, drives him to the rope, staggers him, and Lewis almost goes down. Lewis is held against the ropes by Tony Galento as the referee, Arthur Donovan, gets them apart. 
Coletto's had a good round so far. He's paused out with that left hand. Lewis backs away, gets away from a right at his head, takes the right high on the head that hurts him again. And Lewis battles back with both hands to the head as Galetto again crowds him to the rope. Galetto out of that half crouch now, fires out a right that's short, and he's countered with a left and a right to the jaw by Lewis. Punching, punishing blows. Lewis faints the left hand, ready to jab again. Galetto just stands there, ready to come out with his dynamite left hook. Lewis is short with the left, takes a grazing left hand on the head by Galetto. Galetto drives the left hand to the body. Lewis fights back with both hands to the midsection. A short right uppercut on the jaw. A left and a right to the head as the champion suddenly comes alive. There's the bell. A dramatic and surprising first round at the Yankee Stadium. I thought so. I got fooled. You got fooled? Yeah, he was greatest, great heavyweight. The best. Hey, how about it now? You had him in trouble in the first round. You let him get away? Yeah, he, he well, I to tell you the truth, that referee was hitting me from behind. It felt that way anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, uh, when when Tony hit you with that first punch, I mean, did you really feel it? Well, it really to tell the truth, it's always the first punch you're trying to get in yourself. You're trying to get the first punch. But when you, when you get hit with, a, with the first punch, then the thing goes, you know, it's just like all forgotten now. Man, you're ready for the fight now. So always I trying to I trying to land the first punch. Always trying to land the first punch first. You always you're under the pressure already. You're only 25 years old at the, the night of this fight, yeah, well, and everybody expected you to come in and knock everybody out in the first or second round. Well, tell the truth, this Lento fight, I really didn't want to knock him out at all. And what I mean, I'm let maybe past the tenth round because he had been so bad and calling me all kind of names and everything. I really didn't want to knock him out until like, maybe past the tenth round. You wanted to give him the Chinese yeah, water yeah, torture yeah, treatment. Well, I, 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 honest to God, I really, really didn't. You mean you wanted to carry him and I, cut yeah, him up? I really didn't well, want to knock him like, out. That's not like you, Joe. Well, I don't think you ever did that other, well, any other only time. Only time that ever happened. It's the only time I ever said it. He did call you a bum. Oh, he called him. I everything. called him up and, and and told him to get in shape because I'm going to murder you, bum. And he said to me, "You better you better think right." He said to me. In the third in the third round when I got knocked down, I wanted to. I didn't want to carry it you know, like 10 rounds and I just won't get, get it over with. But if, he, if I hadn't got knocked down in, in the third round, I think the fight would have won 10 rounds or more. Tony, most opponents in those days, Lewis now, maybe not even in his prime yet, lost the fight before they ever came out of the uh, their dressing room. They were afraid of Joe before they came out. No, what was your feeling? Joe was a, you can't put it that way. I don't put it that way. The guy was great. He beat me. When he beat me, he beat the best. Plus, I could lick all them bums. I knocked out Leroy Haynes, Lorenzo Pack, Otis Thomas, Ace Clark, Leonard Dixon, Cuban Bobby Brown. I licked them all. I had 69 knockouts. I had 114 fights. I was the amateur middleweight, light heavy, heavy champion in New Jersey. And uh, I don't know, I was pretty good anyway. And I, he wasn't fighting no stiff. I just didn't get the right punches over. Action packed terror is on direct. All right, now it's time to go back to ringside, Yankee Stadium, 1939. Round two of this historical brawl, and here again, the voice of Don Dumpy. Round two at the Yankee Stadium before a crowd of 36,000 this June night in 1939. Lewis on the right-hand side, Galetto on the left as they get out there for round two. Tony Galetto had a great round in the first round, considering that most people figured he'd get knocked out there, and he had the champion in trouble. Both men go cautious for a moment as round two gets underway. Lewis just sticking that left hand out there, not really trying to land it. Takes another left hook to the jaw as Galetto crowds him to the ropes. Galetto off balance, but Lewis doesn't hit him. Lewis misses the right over the head. Galetto was wild with a right hand thrown from the floor. Lewis short with a left jab. At long range again. Galetto is fighting upright now. He does better out of a crouch. Now he drops a little bit. He's short with the left hand. Is countered by a left hook on the jaw by the champion. The great Joe Lewis. Pounds the right to the body, hooks a solid left to the jaw, jabs the left that's just short of the mark, pounds both hands to the body of Galando, and Galando is being raked for the first time in the fight. Two-ton Tony has never been off his feet in a prize fight. He takes a solid jab on the chin, and a right left, and then a short right to the jaw by Lewis, and Galando is being cut down to size. He outweighs the champion by 33 pounds, 
Galato, a short with the left, is right by another right hand of the body. Galato, the challenger, not doing nearly as well here in round two as he did in round one. Lewis pecks out that left, tries to measure him, does, crashes on the right, and Galato is down from that left hook on the jaw, and he bounces up without a count. The first time Galato has ever been off his feet in a prize fight. Galato takes the left hook, a right to the jaw, he's starting to bleed around the mouth. Another right high on the head by Lewis. Lewis is having a great round here in round two. Again, they're in a clinch. Lewis calmly measures his man, jab that left on the chin. Lewis watches Galeno start to come in on him. Then Galeno backs away a little bit. Lewis trying to measure his man on the rope, connects with the left hook to the jaw as Galeno comes in on him, and Galeno forces Lewis against the rope where the referee gets them apart. Round three for the heavyweight championship of the world at the Yankee Stadium, June 1939. Lewis again short with a pecking left hand. Galato into the right left hook to the jaw of Lewis. And Lewis holds on as Galato forces him against the rope over in Tony's corner. Out in the center of the ring again. Galato keeps moving his hands up and down in front of his face, short with a left lead at the head. Lewis ready to measure his man again. His left down low, his right ready to come in and counter. Lewis a light jab on the chin of Galato. Galato scores with a light left hook on the jaw. A short right uppercut on the chin. One of the few right hands that Galato has landed so far in the fight. Out in the center of the ring they go. Lewis is dropped by a left hand of the jaw by Galato. The champion was down. A hard left hook on the chin. Caught Lewis on the way in. And the champion was down. They've both been down once in this fight so far. Let's see if Galato can follow up his advantage, but Tony's face is well marked. He's taken a beating. Lewis misses a right hand at the jaw as they go into a clinch, and again the referee has him apart. Tony, after the knockdown, has been very wild. He runs into another left hook on the jaw by Lewis. It's round three for the heavyweight championship of the world, and not many thought it would go this far. Galato misses the left hand at the jaw, and again the champion goes in and holds on as Galato forces him to the rope. Two-ton Tony at 233 and three quarters is a very strong young man. He's got his arm around Lewis's neck and tries the right hand on the head. But surprisingly, it has been a clean fight. Yankee Stadium, the scene of this heavyweight championship battle. Lewis ready to go to work again. Here's Galato, his mouth wide open. He seems to have trouble breathing right now. Gets away from the left, thrown at his nose by the champion. Galato, a left hand high on the head again. And Lewis miss, makes him miss a left. And again, they go to close quarters and hold on. The round is coming to a close now. Lewis moving out after Galato. Gets away from that left hook. Took on Tony, the aggressor. And that's the end of round. I'm in that ring. I do all my own instruction. Right? The guy in the corner don't mean nothing. He's not getting hit. I'm getting hit. So you, you planned well, your own I, strategy. My own strategy. That's, that's uh, what, who, how many fights did he have? Strategy. Well, huh. not, not too many, I don't Tony, believe. Tony, I want to ask you a question. How come you didn't have much of a right hand? Well, you saw a right hand, you're off balance. That's how he knocked me down. I threw the right hand, he knocked me on my, my backside. And believe me, I was never knocked down. I did go out the ring one time. I dove at a guy to hit him, and I went right out in the audience. I got back and I knocked him out after that, but uh, out of the ring I went. I missed Joe, the guy. Sorry, Tony. What? Joe, you wanted this to go 10 rounds, you said, but when you knocked him down, were you hoping he'd get up? He wanted to cut me up. Yes. You're hoping he'd yeah. get up? I, I really did. Did you feel that way about other fighters you fought? Never did. He's the only one that made me so mad that, you know, <laughs> I really would. He, he got, called he, everything he had called me during the training period for the fight. He really... He it put the needle yeah, in Yeah, he you. really did. Yo, really I, re did. I remember one day in the training camp, you just shook your head and you said, why that little fat man calls me a bum? <laughs> yeah, he said, someday I think I'm a bum. But he does say, <laughs> no, he does call me everything. All right, now let's go back for round four of this heavyweight classic between Galeno and Lewis and again, Don Dumpy. Round four, Lewis the champion, Galeno the challenger. Lewis gets out there quickly. He's got Galato in trouble, even though Tony had him down in the last round. Galato's face is well marked, well battered by the champion. Joe Lewis gets away from the left hand, gets away from another. Galato has no respect for Lewis, apparently. He comes in at him again and again, trying for a knockout. Lewis bounces around the center of the ring. Arthur Donovan is the referee. Lewis feigning the left hand, feigning it again. Again, Galato comes in wild with that left hand. Lewis grabs him and holds him as Galato forces him into the rope. Out in the center they go again. Lewis up on his toes a little more now. Now he goes flat-footed to get that power in his punches. 
Lewis meets Galetto on the way in with a sharp jab on the nose, and Galetto is wild with the left, but he brings in a short right up a touch of the jaw of the champion. Galetto faces, faints the left hand, goes into a crouch again, away from a jab, away from another, but he takes a solid right hand of the jaw by Lewis. It's a question of how much of this battering Galendo can take now. He's hooked with the left to the jaw by the champion. On the inside, Galendo scores with a left hook on the jaw. Referee Arthur Donovan has them apart again. Lewis faints the left hand. Galendo moves away from a left that goes over his head. Lewis short with the lead. Takes a light left on the chin by Galendo. Again, they go to close quarters and are parted by the referee. Galendo is tiring now. Lewis at full strength. Lewis short with a jab. Lewis faints the left hand, brings in a short right up a cut to the jaw, and blocks the left hand at his head by Galendo. They're in a clinch in dead center of the ring. You can see how marked Galendo's face is now as Galendo hooks the left hand on the jaw. Galendo wild with the left over the head, countered for the left hook to the jaw. Lewis is measuring his man, crashes a solid right hand to the jaw. Galendo is staggered. He takes the left hook. He takes a short right up a cut. It's near the end now, I think. Galetto fires back with the right. It's met with the left and the right to the jaw. A fusillade of punches by the champion. You can't keep up with them. Another left hook, and the referee goes over and gets them apart. I don't know what's keeping Galetto on his feet. Lewis comes at him again. Galetto is staggered. Staggered again by a right. Then a left, a right up a cut, a left hook to the jaw. With time against Galetto as he staggers into the rope. He almost goes down. The referee holds on to him, and that is the end. The time, two minutes, 29 seconds of the fourth round. The winner and still world heavyweight champion, Joe Lewis. Thank you, Harry Ballow. Here at Yankee Stadium, Joe Lewis has successfully defended his title for the seventh time with a sixth consecutive knockout. You were very personally unhappy with Glennon before the fight. You wanted to cut him up. You wanted to carry him 10 rounds. Yet after the fight, you paid him a tribute. You said he was the toughest man you'd ever fought. Yeah, he was. He, he was a tough fight. He's taking good punches. And for me, Glennon has been a good he friend of yeah, for a long time. Yeah, he should be the, honored by all all people. He was a great fighter, the greatest. One of the greatest. Well, I think he has been honored. I rate him like, I think Gene, Tony, and Dempsey were good, but he was better because I don't think Dempsey fought a lot of big apes that I would lick easy. Guys like Jess Swartz. I could knock out every big guy, six foot eleven, six foot ten, six foot nine. Leonard Dix is six nine. Oh, I knocked them all out. They were easy because they're targets. But him, he kept that jab and he was sharp puncher. And I tell you the truth, I thought he had a razor in him gloves. Now let's let's talk about that. Now let's to take a Joe Lewis back with us to the fourth round. Yeah. A twenty-five year old Joe Lewis, and have Joe. Described, uh, we, we really see him here, uh, the, the greatness of him, uh, the left, the right, the quickness as he works you over in his fourth round. Well, I think the fourth round came, really actually came from, from the third round. I have knocked down the third round. I think that... Uh, You're mad. Yeah, that, that uh, the fourth round was, was, uh, was woke me up and, and made me forget about uh, what I wanted to do. So I just went ahead and, and, and fought a little harder and told me. How good were you at this age, Joe? Were you better later on? Is this your prime right now, 25, or were you better when you're 28, 29? I think between 25 and 26. You know. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is right when you're you know. right at your peak. Look at this. How are you feeling about now, Tony? Being hit like that. to see that. <laughs> it's still. This is 1939. You can still feel it. I'll bet. Oh, there's a. Don't think Lewis was fighting a bum. I licked a lot of men that quicker than him, like like Nathan Mann, two oh, he, rounds. He Russia, said one you were round. A, he said, Barry, one round. He said you were a great fighter. I know. He res he respected me. Don't worry about that. But Don, I, Don and I were talking, and I, I said, who are the two greatest sports figures of all time in America? And I don't think you get much argument, Don. And Tony, I'd like to get your thought. Babe Ruth and Joe Lewis, the two most famous oh, sports geez. figures. I, I think you might have other people Babe might Ruth was a great else. guy. Yeah. But Babe the Babe Ruth. and Joe are legends of American sports. That's right. I look like a piece of raw meat. I think he have, I think they put in 40 stitches in him. 40 stitches in him. A lot here, up in here. And the Monsell Solution blinded me, and I thought I was getting hit from all angles. That's why I thought the referee was hitting me. If you had to do it all over again, would you fight him any differently? Well, no. I did the same way, maybe. I, we... He, it's a funny thing when you get to that bridge across it. Well, we want to thank Tony Galendo and Joe Lewis.
and Don Dumphy for being with us on the way it was. And so, tough Tony Galeno proved himself gallant, proud in defeat. He'd retired to his tavern in Orange, New Jersey a few years later, 1944. But he would always be remembered, and he could remember himself how close he came to scoring a great upset in ring history. For Joe Lewis, this was the seventh in a string of 25 unequaled title defenses. He would retire in 1949, in the opinion of most people, the greatest heavyweight champ of all time. And as I've always said about Joe, truly a credit to the human race. This is Kurt Gowdy saying, that's the way it was when Joe Lewis defended his title against Tony Galando in the 1939 heavyweight title fight. Thank <laughs> you.